riprendiamo, riprendiamo con l'ultima tavola rotonda prevista per la giornata dedicata alla, alla, alle città sostenibili, alle comunità sostenibili. Okay, we are ready now to resume our meeting. We've been talking about uh, sustainability all day, and uh, we've already um, covered this uh, subject uh, of sustainable cities and communities this morning with uh, the mayor of Milan, Giuseppe Sala, and I'd now like to invite Mauro Annunziata from Smart Energy Division in Air, Fabio Benasso, CEO and President of Accenture Italy, Greece and Central Europe, Gaila Bernini of the uh, Fondazione Bracco, and she's the director of the she's the director of the corporate social responsibility um, division of Braco and Patrizia Guangualano, independent director and member of NED Community. This is the community of independent administrators. Now, I would like to begin with uh, Annunziato, who is the director of Smart Energy of Enea. This morning. We heard from Mayor Sala. He spoke to us about some of the changes, uh, the uh, sea changes that uh, are occurring in mobility and in energy distribution. Not everyone agrees with the speed of uh, change uh, because this is all impacting our practices our habits and uh, it's also impacting supply uh, patterns. The uh, European Commission, in fact, uh, uh, has uh, discussed reducing the emission thresholds and therefore all auto manufacturers are being uh, pressured today. I believe it's 118 grams per kilometer of CO2 and in 2030 it'll be about half of that number. So there's uh, a lot of pressure that is being exerted on automobile manufacturers, you see. So mm, this is important for com petition competitiveness. And in uh, a time of change where the rules of the game are changing, so some manufacturers are more advanced in this area than others. FCA, I think, is uh, lagging behind when it comes to alternative uh, um, models. So our uh, supply chain is going to have to pay the pr a price for that. So uh, we were recently in a meeting in Milan uh, on this subject, and uh, one of the local energy suppliers was uh, invited there. And uh, years ago, to invite uh, someone like that to a meeting on mobility was fine. I mean, you could say, OK, turn, keep the lights on so that people don't crash while they're driving a car or a bicycle. But now it's become ever more important. It isn't such a trivial fact. So Mr. Annunziato is going to talk to us about how this is impacting some of our cities, not all maybe, but how it's changing local infrastructure and our customs and habits. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for the invitation. OK, so clearly our objectives of the past in terms of energy efficiency and energy savings need to be better defined now in order to meet our new objectives. We've talked about energy efficiency and uh, renewable energy, and yet uh, we cannot achieve those objectives. We need to be more aggressive. So that's why we launched the idea of smart cities. This is an approach which uh, includes uh, environmental and energy issues, but also uh, quality of life issues. Because uh, we can change our lifestyles, uh, that means uh, to have a profound change and therefore social acceptance. Now, we've been doing quite a bit over the years uh, um, uh, in the infrastructure area for smart cities. Uh, and there are some approaches that have clearly shown that they are quite solid and sound. Just a few uh, weeks ago in Livorno, we completed a project on smi smart uh, public lighting. And uh, there uh, is a variety of services provided to citizens, the traffic monitoring, Wi-Fi, air monitoring, air quality monitoring. and. Uh, uh, there is an annual fee which is 20% lower than what they were already paying with their previous lighting system. So the city has basically invested nothing. The businesses have invested and the city is paying less than what it used to pay. So infrastructures are definitely changing. And uh, now there are more technologies being used. And uh, we heard about all those technologies earlier. And what about data processing? We know that there are 
uh, very clear guidelines, and at Enea, we are uh, setting up standards for all Italian cities. But there is a fundamental matter which hasn't yet been thoroughly assessed, and maybe this is what we should do, and that is how to involve citizens how to engage citizens. We're working in the working groups that are uh, drawing up the new European plans, uh, the 21-27 plan, 2021-2027. And on cities, there are two buzzwords uh, that are being um, used all over Europe, citizen engagement and positive energy district. The positive energy district is a model neighborhood in a city which can be replicated, duplicated, and uh, um, basically, the sum of all consumption is zero, whereas citizen engagement is a bit more difficult to achieve. We're working on it, uh, but internationally, I would say that uh, there, there is the idea of smart communities, and maybe a smart community is the way to get citizens engaged, not only as individuals, but as an entire community. So what does that mean? Basically, uh, there are methods and technologies procedures uh, that uh, try to facilitate uh, the self-organization of local communities. Uh, now, you have you developed a project of this kind in Rome, is that so? Yes. Well, we've uh, uh, tried this in L'Aquila, in Matera, in Brescia, but what we're developing now is in Centocelle, in a neighborhood in Rome, and it is quite interesting, I might say, because um, over the years we've uh, uh, worked with uh, a very large uh, community, uh, including students and local associations and universities. Uh, they developed smart labs and then they created community projects. What we're doing now is uh, a pilot, some pilot experiments. The energy community concept, uh, this is one of our experiments. So we have citizens that can exchange energy uh, amongst themselves. Uh, um, the uh, laws don't allow this yet, but they're experimenting with this all over Europe. And there's another interesting area that we're trying to develop, uh, and we have a pilot experiment going on in Centocelle, and that's the local sharing economy. So what is this? It is a model which uh, envisages an exchange among citizens uh, of uh, actions that are socially useful or important. Let me give you an example. I can um, offer a training course, for example, and I can earn something through smart contracts and black chains. I earn these so-called social tokens, which I, ca I can then use to buy something else. And um, there are companies involved now. For example, Achea, this is uh, for, for power flexibility. In other words, if you make your consumption flexible, I will give you tokens that you can use to buy other social services. So you see, uh, we are connecting this uh, issue of social cohesion and the strength of a community with uh, uh, the flexibility in um, the power grid and power supply. So new business models. Uh, this is going to um, now um, move us along here to Mr. Benasso from Accenture Italia. Spoken about risking destroying jobs uh, because of uh, the um, uh, use of new technologies. Are there alternatives uh, being used now? And uh, the cities are a good um, lab, as it were, uh, for experiments. And now I uh, have seen this in Milan, for example, where I live. I know that there are new uh, providers operating on the market uh, in, in uh, transportation networks, uh, physically and digitally, and all the hubs uh, which are proliferating. Even ATM is an experimenter of new applications and Vodafone is experimenting with 5G in Milan and this is an enabling technology to provide new services through digitalization. digitization. So how is the world changing? Well, today um, the technologies have been mentioned several times. Even in the previous session, we were talking about the cloud, blockchain, etc. And I think that technology um, it's an accelerator of change and innovation. It needs to be orchestrated. Just let me uh, qualify that comment. There are various experiments going on in various cities to ultimately achieve scale, to speed up the creation of value. 
and all the various stakeholders, all the various parties involved, all the bits of technology, from LEDs to connected um, cars, etc., physical devices, panels, uh, photovoltaic panels, whatnot, uh, uh, it all has to work together. And the connectivity uh, has to be harmonious. So d digital technologies draw value from data because data is what it's all about. Everything revolves around data and making it all interoperable. And the connections between various parties, it's what uh, creates a loop. When you're talking about mobility, it's not just uh, cars to go or a sh car sharing. Uh, it's the ring roads, it's parking, it's public transport. So it's really creating integration to make all the various parties interoperable with their technologies. And I think that uh, cities today uh, need to work, as it were, on a platform uh, based on certain standards, integrating different parts at different speeds, and also integrating future innovations. The world is very fluid and the innovation rate is very high. So it needs to be orchestrated. It needs, yes, but you've got hundreds and thousands of companies that report to your network. Are the companies more concerned about losing their business models and uh, their position, their market share, or uh, are more of them coming to you to say, help me um, develop what I, this idea that I've got, but I need to also make it profitable thanks to the use of new technologies. Well, I believe that our mantra is, this is the post-digital era, era. So there's lots of technology around, so let's use it, let's create value, let's create a competitive edge, and let's come up with new processes by adding value to what we already have and enhancing that value, which in many ways means taking the data, making the most of the value, knowing your client, speeding things up, working within the ecosystem. Uh, the platform economy blurs traditional divides between public and private. Uh, all around sustainable cities, there are telcos, utilities, there's a public, the private. Uh, there are operators that have to interoperate based upon protocols where there are flexible flexible borders between them. And I think this is where technology can be an accelerator, but it needs to be uh, orchestrated to avoid creating microservices that don't add value. So it means being able to interpret data, to predict things, to anticipate things, logistical flows, for example, traffic and pollution. So, you know, this is an added value that will lead to a paradigm shift. Shift. And I think it also is technology that needs orchestrating to help Italy uh, achieve high speed. Vi fiber, for example, um, because uh, going forward, there will be more and more data that needs to be transferred. Uh, more services, more uh, products, uh, more services will travel along the digital highway. So uh, there's a, a real risk of widening the divide between the rich and the poor. Um, like Milan compared to Livorno that hasn't got a smart mobility system because whenever you um, uh, you know, look for a taxi, the whole system uh, comes to a stop. Yes, uh, you know, there's 5G technology, there's all sorts of things, uh, but they, you need to be able to extract value from them. Okay. Well, let's go on to uh, Gaia Bernini uh, from the Bracco Foundation, and she's in charge of corporate social responsibility. I would start from the fact that for the past few years now, the EU has asked all major corporations to come up with a sustainability uh, balance sheet. And there are two schools of thought. Some thought that companies would simply publish a document because they had to and then state we're sustainable. Others who really uh, uh, taken on board the concept is that uh, thanks to pooling, companies would eventually become more sustainable, uh, highlighting things that they already did but uh, people didn't know about uh, with very positive um, spins on marketing. So from your point of view, how has your uh, res social responsibility uh, report changed over time? 
Well, from the very start, uh, uh, we've been a family-run enterprise, and we've always focused on our community, our local community. Uh, in fact, uh, when you are a family-run enterprise, this is what you do. You don't uh, only focus on yourself, but also the surrounding community. So with the Bracco Foundation, we've done even more than that. We've uh, uh, tried to uh, take in care of other areas as well. Now, we're speaking of cities here, and we know that in cities there are many contrasts and contradictions. In fact, um, cities attract talents. However, often we know that there is a lot of alienation in cities. So this contrast, these inequalities um, are there for all to see. Everyone has uh, um, to contribute to this. Businesses uh, have their share of responsibility too because we either all grow together or nobody grows. And uh, even in the uh, Sustainable Development Goals on the 2030 Agenda, we see what the uh, guidelines are. So this is uh, what we're focusing on. And how do we do this? Well, we are working in a system. Uh, in an evidence-based fashion, we try to measure needs and requirements and we identify solutions on that basis. For example, uh, so as I said, we measure the impact. We measure the impact of what we've uh, produced and done over time. So we're doing this not because we want to be visible. It is important to ensure transparency so we measure our impact. But while we're doing all this, we're also improving what we do because we're monitoring and we're learning along the way. Now, in the Comune, in the Municipality of Balanzate, we started a project some years ago mm, uh, Oltre i margini, uh, beyond the, the margins, as it were. And uh, we're talking about a municipality which is right next to the expo site. While they were building up the expo site, there was all this uh, energy uh, being put into uh, this new novel idea. And we received a letter um, from a municipality with 11,000 inhabitants. And 33% of the inhabitants are foreign nationals of 67, 76 different nationalities and uh, uh, 77% of uh, um, people born there are foreign nationals. Uh, so there is an institutional vacuum, a void. They are part of the metropolitan uh, city of Milan, not the uh, city proper. So um, we had to um, seek out uh, some interlocutors who could be effective, uh, who could uh, uh, operate in the uh, area. And in order to make a real difference, you need an organization such as a social promotion organization, which has to be enlightened. In other words, you need people who are indeed very skilled and uh, capable. So we identified the needs, especially the health care needs and jobs, social inclusion needs, uh, working with migrants. And this takes me back to something that I heard this morning here. Um, using the know-how of these migrants, uh, women and also men, well, uh, they, they know how to sew, for example. We found some excellent uh, seamstresses. So Fiore Locchiello is a uh, tailor shop that was uh, created and they produce also for um, some leading brands in Milan. So they're also bringing their know-how, their knowledge with them. It isn't only a question of uh, identifying their needs, but they have something to contribute. This is important. So. We are good at Braco with health care, so we opened up this health care door, as it were, because we knew uh, that we needed to meet some basic requirements in health care. So what did we um, discover? We saw that the uh, income levels of these people has increased, their um, health has increased, and there are better relations and relationships, so they, are, they feel more integrated, they feel safer in their community. Uh, there are fewer conflicts. Uh, there used to be more um, before this. Effort. So uh, this has been uh, a major outcome. We have managed to prevent some cases of inequality, which of course are, end up being harmful to everyone. Now Patrizia Gianguelano, who has uh, been an observer of uh, the narratives, the stories and strategies of some of these uh, virtuous uh, businesses in the area of social responsibility. So what uh, would you like to say? What have you heard uh, about this? What, is, what are some of the common features of these businesses? Or do they have to be large or can they be small? Well, first of all, I wanted to congratulate you on this initiative because this is precisely what we should be doing every day, telling stories, telling success stories. So no, I can't do that. I, I really couldn't cope with doing it every day. Well, I think we should. We should do it every day because if we set, describe examples and success stories, if we tell 
people what uh, virtuous, what best practices are, we would help the market as a whole. I wrote a book and it includes data on non-financial reporting in the second year of its application and it really talks about sustainability basically because as independent directors who sit on boards and have responsible positions in many corporations, um, it was, we realized that uh, many people talk and write about sustainability, there's lots of research, uh, we have a heap of evidence, but uh, not all businesses have actually come to terms and understood the value of all this, nor have they understood that it is an opportunity. It's a competitive opportunity for creating value, not just for shareholders, but also for uh, meeting stakeholder demands. So now I, I think we need to understand uh, the subject and to communicate it. We need to say what's being done and uh, as we've seen in previous panel sessions, people are talking about the environment, we're talking about the social sphere, but there's also uh, another important aspect which needs to be factored in when you're dealing with these issues. We call them ESGs, Environment, Social and Governance. So it's another important aspect, which is governance, corporate governance, which essentially has to be developed within companies so that so that these topics become part of strategic planning. So uh, not just a one-off, but a sustainability plan has to be embedded in uh, company strategy. So what is good governance, basically? Well, again, it's a great question because governance, corporate governance is intangible, it's uh, unmeasurable essentially. But if you start looking at how a board is put together, a board of directors is put together, how the board manages businesses, uh, how uh, directors behave, what the style of um, a company is, etc., well, all that will give you uh, a framework for all these initiatives and how they're communicated. So the subject is non-financial reporting. And non-financial reporting, for the time being, is a rule based on a European directive, but only for very large companies, essentially calling for five topics to be reported on, which are environmental, social, uh, employees, hu uh, human rights, um, active and passage struggle against uh, con corruption and diversity. And uh, essentially, the report covers uh, how companies deal with these uh, five aspects as well as roles and responsibilities. Roles and responsibilities on the board, control functions, CONSOB is the regulator that ensures that companies comply with the uh, rules and regulations, and in our uh, survey, we found that only uh, companies obliged to do so put out a non-financial uh, non-financial report. And at the end of the day, uh, I don't think the message got across to smaller companies. They have to get used to it. They should become accustomed to measuring their behaviours. Um, presenting them. And, well, that's what you're saying about governance. But I believe you also have a training schedule, uh, a training program for schools. And I think we have a short video. Yes, brace yourselves because it's, um, it's heavy going. Sustainability, looking for enterprises. Do you think that reality is what you see around you? Sustainability, growth, climate, circular economy, human rights, sustainable finance, governance? Uh, is it a utopia? Utopia is thinking that the current system can continue working. 
sustainability looking for enterprise and a national initiative for students to offer high levels of quality education on particularly hot topics. Discovering new balances, uh, economic and social equilibriums. Uh, turning students towards responsible careers and professions. Uh, an a learning experience that is uh, uh, engaging and innovative. Educational methods that are digital and interactive. An opportunity to uh, also for teachers to uh, explore these issues. Sustainability, let's invest in the future. Let's train the people who will be in the future. So this is a video that really stresses the urgency. And you're right. Yes, we, we've run out of time. So we basically must take steps to ensure that teachers begin dealing with these issues in schools. And right now, at another meeting that's happening in Milan at this time, the uh, savings conference, um, there's a session on education and training uh, and on financial education. We uh, banks are focusing on this uh, topic and um, financial education uh, is designed, hopefully, to uh, help students understand uh, what it's all about. Um, I think that in Sweden it's been proven that by educating young people, teaching young people, uh, using technology and social media, etc., uh, well, that um, sustainable finance and uh, sustainability really can come to the fore. So the Bracco Foundation, you're also proposing something for the outer suburbs. For uh, I, I know that there will be uh, uh, another initiative to um, enhance the quality of life in uh, sometimes in the uh, poorer suburbs of our cities. We have to make sure that there is a visibility uh, with regard to optimism, in other words, of wanting to do things. We need uh, all the different actors in these uh, um, communities uh, um, to be on board, uh, both nationally and internationally. So basically, we need to make sure that the public administration is in uh, a um, steering role. We need to have their presence. Uh, we heard this from the mayor this morning. However, uh, we, the, the movement needs to be from the bottom up, and that is why a no-profit uh, approach is essential. We have to make sure that we hear the voices of the people living in communities. Uh, in fact, uh, they are the ones who will then be uh, on the receiving end of these administration programs. And of course, businesses have a role to play, uh, because they are the ones who take action, and this action has to be visible. We've talked about some cases in different areas of the city of Milan, even in the Spanish uh, neighborhood in uh, Naples, for example. They've managed to intercept a void, and they have uh, filled it with uh, high-value activities uh, for everyone's benefit, uh, for the common good. So why is the Bracco Foundation doing this? Because, uh, um, well, we, ha we held our first national conference on urban outskirts, uh, and we were going to do another one in um, Palermo on the 14th of June this year uh, using the same model. So uh, my president, Diana Bracco, and uh, the ownership of the foundation uh, believe that we cannot uh, um, not be part of this issue of inequalities in cities. Everyone has to do their share. So we need to have system-wide best practices. This has to be an opportunity for other communities as well. Um, okay, so what happens? Uh, what will happen when we all decide to charge up our electric cars uh, um, at the uh, charging stations? Uh, uh, we are, know that we need to invest in this network, but it's not there yet. Yes, it is a problem, and uh, it needs to be dealt with. The smart grid uh, is what we're, in fact, talking about. We believe that it's a topic that can be tackled primarily by talking about it with citizens, with uh, the people. And if you understand where the next uh, charging station is and if you have um, uh, technology assisting you to find your way, driverless cars and all the rest of, the, of that, uh, there's a 10-year transition for 
us to support these uh, new systems. We're talking about smart grids and uh, it will manage the transition. It needs to be uh, taken on board gradually. We're talking about electric cars, we're talking about uh, autonomous cars. So there will be a transition period, but technology alone can't do it. We also need to deal with and talk about mobility uh, so that citizens take it to heart, um, learn about it, talk about carpooling, uh, pool their travel, perhaps uh, even within a community, uh, to redesign mobility and perhaps even take uh, the example from best practices. I believe that uh, Sweden has a very high percentage of electric cars being registered and we need to see how they're dealing with it and what they're doing. So you're talking about new business models and there's concern about uh, them not always being sustainable. What opportunities are there? Where uh, can companies find um, ways of improving their competitive edge thanks to technology? I think uh, the next uh, city frontier is going to be the circular city. We've been speaking about uh, circular economies, uh, and I think that uh, um, Mr. Salah's city is a place where uh, people and products uh, flow, um, and uh, we're going to need to direct changes. Uh, they're coming from business needs, uh, the supply chain. We know they are part of the circular economy, and it's also a question of uh, competitiveness. So this city has to govern those flows and therefore they can speed them up. We spoke earlier about uh, urban regeneration. Well, the redesign of urban regeneration uh, may be a good practice uh, and it may help us to uh, build uh, up uh, new approaches, uh, new schemes, uh, new patterns. Uh, and uh, uh, we maybe can see this as a retrofitting device for that which is old, uh, for, for that which comes from the past. And uh, I think it is a physical um, aspect that has to be uh, guided we have Paris, London, and Glasgow. These are cities that are launching new programs. And uh, the other element, uh, the other part of the program is uh, new, uh, uh, new employment uh, uh, using innovative materials. And uh, uh, we have to conceive new jobs uh, in a new system. Uh, and this is how we can create sustainable development. Yes, change uh, doesn't only mean a new kind of mobility. The president of ATM was saying that to have everything electric, uh, to have an electric fleet, uh, doesn't only mean to change uh, the uh, vehicles, but uh, we need uh, training, we need new skills, we need a new maintenance network, uh, and we have to uh, wonder about uh, uh, what this new mobility is going to be like. So thank you very much uh, to all of our panelists. Uh, I think we can now wrap up today's... Uh